Howdy! In the previous lesson, we derived an equation for the vortex strength distribution over, an, a, over the vortex sheet of a cambered airfoil. So in this lesson, we're going to be using this vortex strength distribution in order to find the lift on that cambered airfoil. So once again, we'll have some camber to our airfoil and we'll represent this as a vortex sheet. And each section psi of this vortex sheet is going to have some differential lift associated with it. So our total lift is going to be the integral over our entire chord of our differential lift, which in turn is going to be equal to as the differential lift is equal to rho times V infinity times the differential circulation. This will be rho times V infinity times the integral from zero to C. And then we need our differential circulation, which is simply gamma uc C D Xi. Now, since we have gamma as a function of theta, we need to convert this into theta using our relationship that we've been using for all of thin aerofoil theory, which is xi is equal to c over two, one minus cosine theta, and d xi is equal to c over two times sine theta. So we'll substitute this d xi with our theta term, and I need a d theta here as well. And we'll arrive at our lift being equal to rho times v infinity, integral from zero to pi of gamma of theta times sine of theta d theta. So now we'll substitute in, oh, and I need a c over 2 here from our d psi. Now we'll substitute in our gamma of theta. First off, we'll put in uh, this in front of the integral. So our lift per unit span will be uh, rho v infinity squared. This two will go away and we'll be left with a c times the integral from zero to pi. Now we'll plug in our first term. Let's go ahead and put some brackets here. Plug in our first term, which is a naught times one plus cosine theta, and these sine thetas will cancel out. So we just need a d theta, and then we'll have our infinite sum, n is equal to one to infinity. We'll bring this a n term outside of the integral, and then integrate from zero to pi, times sine of theta, times sine of n theta d theta. And we can close our brackets. So the integral from 0 to pi of 1 is simply equal to pi. And the integral from 0 to pi of cosine of theta is equal to 0. And then we'll use our Fourier analysis that we discussed in the previous lesson to say that this integral, when n is equal to 1, this will be pi over 2. But if n is not equal to 1, then this will be 0. And this comes from recognizing that this m term in front of this theta would be equal to 1. So the only case where m is equal to n is when n is equal to 1 as well. Now this means that our lift will be equal to rho times v infinity squared times c. And then we'll have a a naught pi. And we only need to worry about the a1 term over here which means that we can represent this entire infinite sum as a1 
times pi over 2. And we typically like to think of things in coefficients. So let's look at the lift coefficient, which is simply the lift per unit span divided by 1 half rho d infinity squared times our surface, which is c times a unit span. And this is simply equal to 2 times a naught pi plus a1 of pi over 2. So this is our lift per unit span, and this is our lift coefficient for our Cambridge Airflow.